them. Take control. Take control of your city. This. This is the instrument of your liberation. Sorry, every time I put this thing on, I want to do a Bane voice. What's happening, Fusion friends? If you couldn't tell from the intro tonight, we're going to be painting. What, you ask? Well, that's a good question. We're actually going to be painting that Rayburn Red style lipless that you saw in my video earlier this week that I used. I'm going to do a couple different versions, I think. We'll see how these turns out. I've had some people ask how I do it. There's not a lot to it, so tonight I'm going to show you. So enough of my face. Let's start painting. Okay, so today we will be painting this guy. Just got him primed with some opaque white, looking all nice and ready to go. Some Rayburn Reds. Now these come in a few different colors depending on uh, on the company that's making them. Oh, just got a message. Oklahoma's Worst Angler. Shout out to him. Make sure you check out his channel. He's a dang good dude. Anywho, those are the things that we're looking at. So generally it's going to have kind of a reddish up top, orangish on the bottom, some kind of gold lines with dots. Some of them have a black dot. Some of them do not. Like that's a Booyah one knocker there. See how theirs has kind of the light black up top, the gold kind of rounded bar deals, and then some gold dots. That actually has a couple black dots on it. A little black on the back. Red eye shad, again, something sort of similar. The gold kind of hoop, half moon looking deal things there. So there you go. You can see there's a few different varieties of them out there, but they're all mainly a reddish dark. Let me just grab the one I did. So that's the one that I did. I've got it tied on here white. I'm stuck on some. Oh my gosh. And that's what we're looking at. So that's the way I did mine. I kind of did that dark fade on the top into a red, into an orange, and into that. I don't know what color they call this, sun yellow. So that's what we're gonna be doing today, mimicking. Now, I noticed I kinda even got some shadowing of some of the others and when I initially did that, but I noticed I kinda got some of the ghosted lines from some of the other kinda curved deals in there, and I kinda like that. I like how they've got the prominent ones and then kinda the ghosted ones in between. So we're gonna try to replicate that again, and that has honestly been the hardest thing, is I paint one of these, I have one that's one of a kind, I'm like, oh, that looks awesome, I wanna paint some more. And I can't remember how I did it or I can't get it to match exactly. So that's been the tough part for me. When I fished this for a day. I already got a little bit of rash on it hitting the rocks, some hook rash. I fished the heck out of it for the day and it caught some fish. So let's stop yapping and get painting. Okay, so to start out, I'm going to start with this sun yellow. I'm going to paint the belly of that. Come up just a little bit up to here. I'm going to kind of fade that into a little bit brighter orange. I kind of had an idea. I got a couple of these the other day, a little bit different colors. I got some metallic copper, some neon red and some neon orange. Let's try these. Let's make two different versions. We're going to see which one you all like out there better. I'll do kind of a bright fluorescent and then one that's just a little bit milder. All right, about even on both sides there. Good layer of that. I'm digging that. Good color orange. All right, let's get a little bit crazy on this next one and go with a neon orange. Okay, so the plan with this one is to put, uh, I don't know, a number of drops in there. I'm going to leave this wet. I'm going to put the red over it. Let's try to get these colors to bleed into the other. Okay, finished product on that one. Definitely a little bit different orange color. I don't know if I'm going to like that or not. And look, be very careful when you set stuff down. I accidentally sat that on something sharp. And just chipped a little piece out. Nice, Debo. See how well this picks up the color there. You can see the one's like a yellowish orange, and that's definitely a bright fluorescent orange. I don't know. Let's go the next step. Okay, next step on this dude, I'm going to go with a little bit of scarlet red. Hmm. Yep, definitely forgot to turn my pressure down. Nice. Yeah, wiped off for the most part. There we go. Much better. Okay, I'm going to shoot kind of down at an angle on this. I'm going to try to draw a line right above that and let it kind of bleed down into that orange. Just like so. Follow those curves. That's not how I'm going to kind of bleed it down into that. And then, of course, up here I can just make even strokes. Color all that in. All right, there we go. I'm digging that. Nice kind of cool little line there. Fades to that yellowish orange on bottom, up into that deep red, and then I'm gonna finish with a little dark black up top. That's gonna make that red a little darker, kind of give it a black back. Let's do the next one. Okie dokie, for this next one, going with some of that neon red. I don't know, it's hard to tell here, but this looks pink to me. Okay, let's not try to blow paint all over this time. This one though, man, it's hard to tell. You can see there the very fluorescent orange on bottom. But you go here, and this is hard to pick it up, but it's not really fluorescent red. It's like a pink. It's really hard to tell on camera. Right there, kind of. Kind of a pinkish. I don't like it. So I'm going to fade from the top. 
a little bit of opaque red. That's just a little Createx. And kind of fade this down the sides and give us an actual dark red up top. There we go. I don't know how well this is going to pick this up on camera, but you can see much darker red up top. And there's almost like a little bit of a pink faint fade in between there. I'll have to take some pictures afterward and show you, but I like that a lot better. So a little dark red up top. Okay, we've got that done. Next, it's time to do our stencil work. Now, to me, this has been kind of hard. Stencil work is kind of tough because I still tend to scratch the, the sides of this bait up. I hit it with the heat gun, made sure it's dry, but still, I don't know what it is. I managed to scratch this stuff up now. Just a cheap stencil I got off Amazon. You could honestly just lay it on there like that and do a few light sprays over it uh, and do the same job. But I'm going to kind of pick and choose which ones of these I use. You can see they're the ones that I did last time. So we'll use that as the first one. I'm going to get some gold loaded in here for this first guy. I'm going to use this. This is just regular gold. That's an Aztec Testors. Let's try that. So we're going to take that first guy like there. So I'm actually painting in this one, this one spot right here where it's kind of dark around it. And this is tough because you kind of get the shadow from some of those other ones just because these lines are so thin. There we go. You can see there I did my first one. I had the pressure a little bit too high there. That does not look good at all. Come on, Debo. There we go. That's what a good clean one looks like. So you can see how I've got the hard line there. Then I kind of let it over spray to those other ones so it kind of gives a shadow. That's exactly what I'm looking for. A lot easier to do down flat on the table so you can hold that stencil tight to the bait. The tighter you get it to the bait, the harder those lines are going to be. You can see here, I couldn't tell how much I was doing and my thing was moving. And I started blowing. See kind of those little spider lines? That's a tip to all of you. You're either putting too much pressure on or you're not getting that stencil down tight enough on that and it's allowing it to run under. For me, it was kind of combo of both. I had my pressure a little bit too high. I was blowing just straight paint down, got up under it. Let me finish that other good side. All right, Fusion friends, you can't see the Debo disgust face, but as you can see, this is all done now. Recorded that, doing all those, and uh, I noticed I was not recording. So I touched this one up a little bit, got the lines on there, left the shading, and I even put a little bit of gold on the bottom of this one just for the heck of it when I got done. Wasn't recording. So I painted up a new one, the red kind of fading down into that orange and I'm going to show you the stenciling on this. Now to make it a little easier I took the things that I'm using here instead of having kind of the shadowing part with it I just used some masking tape and taped those off that way I can get good hard lines out of each one of those. I'm going to do that now and show you that process. Boom. When you have a good solid stencil, you get good hard lines like that. So that's what it should have looked like. I was trying to do that with the other stencils. That said, I did just a little bit lighter. I know some people don't like as dark a marks. Some people want to see the red and orange more. So that's what it looks like with good hard lines. That's what you want to see out of your stencils. This was that kind of fluorescent color I did. Now that one, I just laid that whole stencil on it before I taped it off and just ran it over it. So you can see kind of the cool effect that it gives when you get into different lights. Dark red up top versus that kind of neon orangish pink on the bottom there that bright orange so three completely different versions of this so the one with the little bit harder lines and kind of the hollow ghosting i got that third one in back that almost looks like a zebra stripe through it just kind of the light and then this one so that's when you get those real hard lines really depending on what you like i wanted to kind of show all three of them i was a little upset that uh, my camera shut off but turned out for the better we got three and one thing i forgot to mention with those pearls you will want to have your pressure turned up just a little bit with all that glitter and sparkly stuff in there they're a little bit harder to push out of the gun so you will want to have that spray power up just a little bit but be careful so you don't blow it all over because you'll end up with like what i had on this side where it seeped under it a little bit so be careful okay next step is to use some of this transparent black we're going to go over the back of this with some black one of them maybe i'll kind of shade in the eyes just to show you how it looks when you put a little bit of black behind there but we're going to do the back with some black transparent back black i'm going to start with light layers and go till i get the darkness that i want and there we go that's what happens when you put a little black on it so you see how that all kind of starts to fade in now i can even do this at a little bit different angle here i essentially just held it like this and you can see going from that angle what it's going to hit on there now when you hold it and look at it straight on, some of these parts here where it's kind of a hard edge doesn't really get down in there. So I could take my brush like this and go at a little, like this I guess, 45 degree angle and just do light, light layers right here. And blend that just a little bit more so you can see how that side looks like that. Leaving it the way I did the first time, you can see it's a little bit more red up here. So it's really just what you want, what you like. 
Um, when you put the black on here, it makes that kind of like a dark red up top and really helps kind of bring all that together. So that's the first one. Let's go to this one. This is the one I did with the really clean lines on it. Get this dude done real quick. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Really brings it together. That black kind of shadows the top, makes it look like a dark red, fades down into that lighter red. And this one I put just a little bit harder line. I brought that orange up just a little bit more like that. Looks pretty cool I like that. I noticed that six cents that Nate was throwing, his had a lot more orange in it. So I kind of did that with this one. Okay, now for this one, I'm gonna put a little bit of black behind the eyes to kind of shadow those eyes. I'm gonna go in real small circles. I'm not gonna to try to just spray this all in one dot. I'm gonna go real light and just keep moving the tip of my airbrush and fill that in with black. Till it looks about like that. So I'm just gonna get that whole eye covered in black, do the same thing on the other side. There we go, both of those eyes are done. That one's all black. That one's all black, I like it. You can see already kind of the difference that that looks when you give a little bit of black around the eye versus not. Okay, so for this last one with the fluorescent colors, I'm gonna go with the pearl black. So it's kind of got that shiny, metallic-y, silvery flake looking in it. You can kind of see it there. It's got some silver. I did get that at Hobby Lobby. All the women in there were looking at me like I was crazy. I believe I was the only dude walking around in there with facial hair. We're gonna put a thin layer of that up on the top of it. And I think I might even just kind of flick the, the tip of it and get some, kind of some of that speckling black on this one just to give it something a little bit different that you don't normally see. So let's try that. Not an easy task. And you'll see the difference that this kind of gives it when it's all done with a pearl black instead of a regular transparent black. So I tried to stay kind of just to the top of it. Notice how I didn't get on the sides as much on that one. Stayed a little bit more red. You can see it just barely came down the back on that side. Even that out. There we go, and down the back just a little bit on that side. So those look pretty even. Now, I could take the tip off this and go with a real low pressure and flick it, but one thing I find that works for me is if I just shoot some paint onto the paper here, like a quick flick, and then point over here and just shoot some air. See what it does there? So there we go, give that one kind of a random speckle pattern on it. I don't know, why not? And there's that side. Break it up, make it kind of look dirty. Okay, so the final step is the eyes. We've got them all painted up. I picked out a few. Now, traditionally, the first few that I've made, I've just went with the all black eyes. I like those. I've also got some of these look down eyes, kind of like you see on the Mega Bass stuff. I think we're gonna put that one on that kind of fluorescent one. Now maybe the one that we blacked out, we could do those all black eyes. What do we wanna do on this one? Do we wanna do kind of one of these where it's half blacked out? I could do the red kind of dragon cat eye on there. Looks kind of neat. That one kind of matches the top of back. Let's go with that one. All right, this particular blank takes five millimeter eyes. Tiny, tiny dab of super glue on there. Just like that. We're gonna make these eyes go up and down like that. So we're gonna go that way and this should fit right in here. Five millimeter, hopefully. Yeah, I like that a lot. I think that was a good pick. This guy, we're just doing the whole blackout deal on. There we go, all black, I like that. And for this guy, let's try some of those look down eyes. All right, make sure this gets right in there where we want it. There we go, I like it, little look down action. All right, there you have it, one, two, and three. Comment below and let me know which one you like the most. I think they all turned out pretty cool. Each one just a little bit different look. I like it, now let's go over and check out uh, the finishing station for these. Okay, so quick glimpse at the uh, the station here. So this is my little Rubbermaid container that I've got here. I cut some little dowels, put those in there. That way after I cut these little pieces of wire like that, that's what I put in the bait and then hang those on here for it to drip dry. So I'm using the KBS. I just put that in a little uh, old canning jar. As you can see there, I put some cellophane on it. That was a tip from Jen over at Jekyll Baits or Jekyll Productions. She has been so helpful. Amazing, amazing tutorials on bait painting. Be sure you check her out. But anyway, dip them in the KBS, hang them in there, let them dry. Now, I have this hook up to a hose. That duck goes to a little fan here. So I turn this fan on, plug that baby in. That way it's already pulling air out of here because this KBS stuff, it's potent, it's flammable, it stinks, it's horrible. So that's going out through this. The fan's pulling that out through the window right here. So I built just a little plywood frame, put some little deals on here. That way I can push this in that holds the, the plywood frame in there. That's got a hole in it. Outside through here, I've drilled on a dryer vent, so it just kicks that air out straight out the window. My basement doesn't stink. After I get all this done, dipped and put in here, I put the lid on, 
Got a hole there to pull air through this side. You can't smell any of this stuff. So this setup has been awesome. All right, fishing friends, that does it for tonight. I hope you enjoyed the painting video. The red stuff, spring, I mean, I used to never believe in it. I never threw it. I threw lipless a lot, chrome, shad type stuff, but I never threw the red. I'm glad I started because they absolutely kill. I saw that, uh, you know, on the Bassmaster Trail, they're throwing the red uh, chatter baits, thunder cricket, even red spinner baits. You know, the red in the spring just does well. You could even try swim jigs. I mean, there's a number of things you can do and try the red. If you don't fish the red stuff, especially like a lipless or a square bill, Ripress? I said that like I don't have lips. If you've never tried the Red Lures, give them a try this spring. Now tonight's subscribe fishing friend shout out goes to my man Fat Boy Fishing. Good dude. We talk quite a bit on Instagram. We share kind of tips and stuff about our tackle, but good guy. Supports the channel. Supports me on Instagram. So thank you, sir. And thank you everybody else out there who watches. Comment below and make sure you let me know which one of those three you like. I kind of have one that's my favorite, but I want to see what all of you say. So that's it. I still got to edit. I'm out of here. Thanks for watching and until next time.